please welcome J.H. Wyman and Jeff Pinkner. First question, please. Hey, guys. Hi. Before, before we do any uh, questions, first of all, um, this is Jeff. But speaking on behalf of both of us, thank you guys all for making your time, you know, available to be with us today. We know that among you are, are several people who, who – follow the show closely and are, are huge supporters and we recognize that a large, 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 um, you know, extent of the fact that we're coming back for season four is due largely to you guys yeah. um, for your support and drumming up attention for the show. And we could not possibly be more grateful. Yeah, thank you very much. And our first question comes from Matt Medovich of TV Line. Please go ahead. Hey, gentlemen. Thanks for your time today. Hi. Uh, thank you. I'm curious, if, given the uh, relatively early renewal news, did that allow you to make some wholesale changes to the season finale? Uh, you know, how deep into it were you at that point? We didn't, we didn't really change course at all. Je you know, Jeff and I um, had a plan for the series. You know, this for the you know, for the season this year, and um, you know, we you know we just went, went along with that. With no, nothing, nothing has changed from our previous. And then I'm sure you don't want to detail exactly Mr. Nimoy's involvement in uh, this week's episode, but could you uh, talk about was there a sign-off required by him on however it is that you're using him? Did he have to prove anything? Um, Leonard is, you know, Leonard uh, Leonard retired from acting um, a couple of, you know, at the end of our season finale. Um, and he was very sincere about that, but uh, – uh, Joel and I and uh, uh, and Akiva were sitting around talking about the, the you know the notion that William Bell would inhabit Olivia's mind, and we came up with what we thought was a really cool idea, and we called Leonard and pitched the idea to him, and he just started laughing, and he said, "Okay, I'm in. How do you want to use me?" And uh, and, and we talked him through that, and. It's not he, he, he's participating in the show. It's more than just giving us license. Like obviously Anna did a, sp a spectacular job, um, you, sort of like uh, becoming William Bell. But William Bell is present in this next episode, at, um, the one that airs tomorrow night, and, and present in a way. I guess we can safely say that it gives new meaning to alternate, you know, alternate reality. But uh, it, it's very much. I don't need more. Our next question comes from the line of Henry Hanks of CNN.com. Please go ahead. So uh, when you guys uh, first uh, approached uh, Anna with uh, the idea of uh, becoming uh, William Bell, <laughs> how was, what was that uh, that whole thing like? I'm sure it was an unusual thing. It was actually, you know what, she's, it went like this. Hey, we have this idea, and this is what we'd like to do. And she said, oh, great. <laughs> and that's, she is she is she's up for any challenge. I mean, as as you all can see, as evident, you know, in this season, she, <clears throat> excuse me, she's she's been pulled and pushed in every direction. And you know, Jeff and I are always really, really uh, amazed how how she just sort of you know hits the ground running with everything. I mean, we didn't you know the, the whole invention of the character and how she spoke and 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 what she did with it was all her creation. I mean, it was something that she came up with uh, on her own and. You know, we were all just, you know, so impressed. And so it sort of went like that. It was just kind of like, wow, that's great. Like, give me another challenge. I'll take it. Anna and John spent a weekend on their own just working out their relationship. And John sort of like helping her develop her take on Leonard Nimoy. And, uh, you know, we sat and watched the daily. And, you know, we all had a degree of apprehension because it's it's a high bar. And, and instantly we realized that she she surpassed that. Awesome. Uh, and uh, uh, obviously uh, so many uh, season finales, the, the last two you guys did were, were blind-blowing, and it's just been one twist after another this season. Uh, so can you give us sort of a, a taste of uh, what to expect uh, in the last rest remainder of the season? I think that it, we have sort of um, – approached each end of the season as not only would it be an end to the story for the year, but would also open up the door and sort of uh, imply or be the very first taste of what next season storytelling will be. And we believe that this season's finale does just that. It's, it's a, hopefully it will be wholly unexpected and also recontextualize the story of season three in a really cool way and be fun and entertaining and, and mind-blowing, as you say. 
Next question comes from the line of Sandra Gonzalez of Entertainment TV. Please go ahead. Hi, guys. Hi. How are you? Very well. How are you? Really good. Really good. Um, so first off, I just wanted to know, um, it's sort of a finale question, but, I mean, uh, as the guy before me said, so, um, y'all have a, a history of really bold finales, and a couple of things have come out about about what we can expect. And, um, oh, what's come out? <laughs> well, um, there's there, we know that somebody we love is going to die, someone's going to perish, and there's talk of introducing a third world. Can you talk about any of that? And Or rather, like, I mean, what can you say about any of that? <laughs> uh, half of that is true. Um, uh-huh. Somebody who we all love deeply will die. Uh, we're not introducing a third world. There's our world, um, and then there's the world that Peter was taken from as a baby, and, and we still have plenty of story to tell as an eight-year-old. And we still have plenty of story to tell just in those two worlds. And, you know, maybe at some point in the future there will be a, a, a third world, but uh, not yet. Not yet, no. Uh huh. And how pissed are people going to be about who dies? <laughs> well, you know that you have to. You have to. At, at some point, you know, you have to say, "All right, they're driving," <laughs> and you know, you you, you, got, you got to go with it. I mean, there's there's been so many things that people have assumed or thought, you know, you know, you know, from various sources that that weren't true. I mean, Fringe always does things the way you don't expect. At least we try to. So it, it's going to be effective. And uh, I think I think it will be self-explanatory. I mean, that's really all we can say because uh-huh. we don't want to spoil anything. But to, to, to the season finales, and thank you very um, much, uh, you know, for anybody mentioning that we've done a good job before in the season finales. But you know, it's um, it, it, we're always trying to look for a new chapter. You know, in the last three episodes, we're always trying to sort of, you know, you know, finish the season off with opening a brand new chapter for next season, and you know, sort of put the show in a new context for our viewers. So we're, we can tell you that, that you know, we've, we've tried to achieve that this year as well. Next question comes from the line of Kathy Huddleston of Blaster.com. Please go ahead. Hi, guys. Hi, Kathy. Hey, great to talk to you again, and congratulations on the, on the early pickup. That's great news. Well, thanks. And like Jeff said, you know, without you guys, it wouldn't have happened. And your voice is becoming familiar, which is awesome. <laughs> Proud of them. So now, what can you tell us about tomorrow's episode, other than what we've read in the log line? Uh, Olivia's in crisis. The, the fact that William Bell has sort of taken over her consciousness is a lot more complicated that he, than he had imagined. The episode is a journey, a trip to retrieve Olivia before it's too late. Cool. Anything else? Any other little teasers you want to give us? Well, I, I, you know, as you know, um, Leonard will... Leonard is very much a presence in the episode. I think we're going to, um, you know, ultimately it's a very sad, in the way that we try to do, hopefully it's a very satisfying emotional journey for the characters, while at the same time being something, certainly something that you've never seen on Fringe before. Cool, cool. And, and so what challenges did you guys face as you were putting together the end of this season? challenges Mm -hmm. well we have so many emotional things to pay off and like we've been you know we've been really sort of cognizant of you know finding all the emotion that we can to you know logically come to a conclusion that would be satisfying and at the same time sort of you know suggest that things are going to go further and in different directions um you know we we had a very good idea where we wanted to go even from the beginning of, of of the season so i mean Challenging only in that we're trying to take out things that, like, we had too much story, maybe, <laughs> that we, we would like to tell. So, <clears throat> you know, making those sort of decisions of w- w- what must be seen and what, what, what can be shown and what's going to be sort of reserved as, you know, elements of, of, of next season, uh, that was pretty difficult from my standpoint. Okay. And, Jeff, what about you? There were a couple challenges. One is that we... The first ideas that we get to, we often dismiss because we try to hold ourselves to a high bar. We try to ultimately we try to write stuff that would that we would want to see. The the season has been going along so well that we didn't, you know, we 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 wanted to we wanted the season finale to exceed the season and not just you know pay it off as but also sort of like elevate it and as we mentioned earlier make you view the entire season from a different context like really. Um, emotionally and 
sort of intellectually make you reconsider everything you had seen before. It's one of the themes that we constantly go back to is perception and the different natures of reality and, and choices and how those different choices branch off down different paths. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully, you know, always we set ourselves insane production challenges, which our team in Vancouver, they get scripts from us, they hear what we want to do, they vomit, they cry, and then they, you know, and then they, and then they pull on their shoes and they get to work. Um, and this one certainly does that in a whole bunch of ways. Um, but, and we're in the process of editing it now. So, yeah. you know, we haven't seen the final product, but we're very excited. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for, for doing stuff that I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Our next question comes from the line of Jennifer Arrow of E Online. Please go ahead. Hi, guys. How are you? Good, Jennifer. How are you? I'm wonderful. Um, this is possibly a dumb question. I feel like I'm not as clued into all the spoilers as I really should be considering my job. But this season has had all the, you know, other over there, over here, switching. And I'm kind of scared you're going to take it away next season. I've really enjoyed Evil Olivia and Scarly and Link. Um, is this a season-long arc that will end, or is this something that you uh, it's would actually, but we're it's actually not going to end? Yeah, it's, it's not, not going to end. It's not going to end. That's our plan to go forward. Um, you know, um, that's that's a part of our, the language of of the series now. Okay, so we we haven't. Necessar- you, you're not guaranteeing we'll see all these people every other week for the rest of our lives, but you're not going to murder them all in a <laughs> supernova explosion. <laughs> no, <laughs> there's no nova. No, <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, there, I mean we look. You know, part of the idea was to make a, and it's so it's kind of very. Um, it feels very good to hear you say that uh, for, for for Jeff and I because you know our goal was to try and you know make two shows about one show, have a very compelling mythology on the other side, and, and hope that, that our viewers and fans w- w- would be as engaged as we are with those people on the other side, which, you know, if, if you can imagine looking at it from our perspective back then, it was, you know, we didn't know if, if right. <laughs> would, 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 it, would it would really engage in it as much as we would like. But, but now, you know, it's a huge success for us in that regard. Okay. Um, because we know that everybody really has invested in the stories over there, and and and, and I can, we can promise that it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be even more compelling, and we're going to develop those characters even more, and we're going to see more of of uh, our characters through their eyes and their characters through our eyes, and I, I you know, it, it'll definitely dimensionalize further. Okay, and does the baby have anything to do with that? It, the baby will have a, it will be part of it. But how it's handled, you know, it's definitely, remember, this is fringe. <laughs> it won't be normal. Outstanding. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much.